everybody! Welcome you guys to English Morphology and Syntax. In this semester, before the midterm exam, we will study morphology. And then, after the midterm exam, we will study syntax. So, let's get started with morphology first. So, before we get to know more about morphology, let's have a look at what is morphology first. Morphology is a study of wood form or wood formation. So in this class, we will study about wood structure, how to form the wood, how the wood are forms. And I talk a lot about words, right? Then the next question is that, what is a word? What is the definition of word? How can we know that this one is a word? So let's have a look at this example. The example here we have, yeah, Pirun studies morphology this semester, or study morphology this semester, or this semester, or yeah, Pirun studies and morphologies. So let's have a look. So, in your opinion, what do you think? Which one is a what? Definitely, the answers that come into your mind is that you're going to answer that um, the the words are yeah, Pirun studies morphology this and semester. Not yeah, you study morphology in this semester because that's a sentence. Right? So we can say that words are basic units of language that contain a single distinct meaning full, which means words are single units that contain meaning that has meaning. But the next terminology that I would like to introduce to you guys is mental lexicons. Mental lexicon is a sort of internalized dictionary that contains words that we have experienced. So let's have a look at these examples. In your mind, you might think that reassemble, dogmatism, Expectation, objectivize, and drawingly are words for you. Actually, Peter's, Ishka, Lentamente are also words, but words of different language. But the reason that you think that these words are not words for you because you haven't had any experience about word formation rules of that language. Maybe if you have experience about Finnish language, you might say that Peter's is also a word because it means thank you in Finnish. Or Ishka is also a word for you if you have experience in Irish language because uh, Ishka means water. And also Lentamente, if you have studied Italian before, you might say that Lentamente is a word because Lentamente means uh, slow in Italian. So that's what mental lexicon talks about. To recap again, uh, mental lexicon talks about the internalized dictionary in your brain. So it's gonna record the what the word formation rules that you have experienced. So in some cases, you think that this construction is not a word because you have never experienced that word formation in that language before. So you can see that mental lexicon is that when you see the word, when you explain that word, and then you remember in your brain, so it's gonna be in some um, internalized dictionary. So for example, if you see this girl, and I said like, la mer, and then um, you have never heard the word la mer before, you might not think that la mer is a word, but actually, if you have ever experienced this kind of song, so you might have some um, knowledge that, okay, it's gonna be in some word in the language. The next topic that I would like to introduce to you guys is that word count. So now we know what is morphology. We know what can be words. So next, we're gonna learn, we're gonna study how to count the words. So let me introduce you three ways to count words. The first one is word type. The second one is word tokens. And the last one is lexeme. So let's start with word tokens first. So in word token, you are going to count every word that appear in your data. And you are not going to consider whether that word occurs before or not. So you are going to count it by the spaces that appear in the data. So please remember, if in the word tokens, you are going to count every word whether it occurred before or not. If it's separated by spaces, then you count it. So for example, in this sentence, we have my friend and I walk to class together because our classes are in the same beauty and we dislike walking alone. So how many words can you count? So we're going to call it as 21. And the next sentence. I've been in a hot water so often I feel like a tea bag. How many words can you count? Correct, it's 12. Because we won't count I because I we have a for the B, I for the B, B, E. And we won't count tea bag as two words because tea bag we have dash separated. So we're going to count tea bag as one word. So that's all for word tokens. So to sum up again, in word token, you are going to count every word despite the fact that it occurs before or not. If it's separated by space, you're going to count it as one word. And the next type that I would like to introduce to you guys is that 
what type so in what type it a bit complicated than what token because in what token you call every word does is separated by space but in what types if that word occur twice or maybe may, maybe more than one time you are going to call that word just one time so that is to say you call the word only one time regardless of how many times that that word occur in your data so you have three rules okay the first one you are going to count the word just one time regardless of how many times it occurs in your sentence in your data and the second that words must have the same characters and the third one that words must have the same part of speech so for example the same sentence my friend and i walk to class together because our classes are in the same building and we dislike walking alone so how many words can we count by using word types in this sentence we are going to have just 20 words if we count by word types because we have the word and that occurred twice so we're going to count it as just one time not two times so that's why we have just 20 20 words and in the next sentence we have the sentence mary goes to the Mirat next week and she intends going to washington next month how many words can we count by using word types you have only 12 words because next and two occur twice so we're going to call it at just one time so that's all for word types so to sum up again in word types you're going to call it just one time regardless of how many times that that word occur in your data but to remind you again if you're going to call the word just one time that group of words must have the same character exactly the same okay if you have go and goes you won't count it just one because they don't have the same character and the second rule is that if that word has the same character you are going to consider whether that word has the same part of speech or not and if they have the same part of speech the last criteria that you have to consider is that if that word has the same meaning or not if you say yes to all the rules then you're going to call it as just one and the last type of counting the words is lexeme. So in lexemes, we are going to count the word family just one time. The word family is that the word that different only the grammatical ending or grammatical form. So in this group of words, we are going to count it as just one lexeme or one time. So let's have a look at what can be lexeme. For example, if you see the word class and classes in your data, so we are going to call it at this one time because class and classes belong to the same lexeme, lexeme class, and it's different in the grammatical form because it's different in singular and plurality form. So we're going to count class and classes just one time. We also have singular and plural form in verb as well. For example, in the word have and has, if you see the word have and has in your data, you are going to count it at just one time because we're going to group have and has in the same lexeme, which is lexeme have. So just one time. Not only singular and plural form in the verb, which is quite headache for us, and we also have present, past, and present participle, past participle form in verb as well. For example, if you see the verb walk, walks, walking, walked, to walk in your data, we are going to count it as just one lexeme, one word, which is walks, walk, walking, walked, to walk, are going to belong in the same lexeme, which is lexeme, walk. Or in pronoun, we can have with families or grammatical form as well. For example, if you have pronoun I, me, my, my, myself in your data, you are going to call it as just one lexeme, which is lexeme I. So you are going to call it just one time. So for example, in the sentence, my friend and I walk to class together because our classes are in the same building and we dislike walking alone. And this sentence, if we count by lexemes, we are going to have 16 words because we are going to count my and I, just one lexeme, lexeme I, and we're going to count N just one time. Remember, in lexeme, we are going to call the word that have the same character just one time as well. And then we are going to call walk and walking just one time again because it belongs to the same lexeme. It's just different, only the grammatical ending. And also classes and class one time. And the last one, our and we, which is a pronoun. We're going to count it as just one lexeme, lexeme we. So um, basically, in total, we are going to have 16 words in this sentence. And in the next sentence, Mary goes to Denver next week and she intends going to Washington next month. How many words do we have if we count by lexeme? 
And yes, we have just 11 words. If we count by like themes, because okay, we have Mary one, and we count goes and to go just one time because it's different in grammatical ending. Goes is present form, to go is in PG form, and then we count two one time because it occurred twice. And the last one we call Edinburgh as the fourth word, and then we count next two times, just one, okay, and then we count week six and seven and seven, and then we count she. Not eight, and then we call intense nine. Work, no, tense, intense nine, tense nine. Washington, ten, and then the last one is month eleven. So basically, we have eleven words here. So to sum up again, in like scenes, we are going to count the word that different by grammatical endings or what we say like theme just one time and the second one is that if the word occurred twice we also call it at just one time as well so to sum up again there are three ways to count the words the first one is word tokens in word tokens you count every word like in microsoft words so every word that separate by spaces then you call it just one time and which is a simple simple which is the easiest way to count the word, which is word tokens. And the second one is word types. In word types, you are going to count the word just one time, regardless of how many times that words occur in your data. So if the word has the same character, exactly the same character, and if the words have the same meaning, same part of speech, then you count it just one time. And the last one, which is the most complicated one, well, which is like theme. In like theme, you are going to count the word one time if that word belong to the same word family or the belong to the same like theme for example i me my myself just one time or um class classes just one time the next topic that i would like to talk about is morphemes morpheme is a small less meaningful unit in the language that has meaning as i told you before meaningful mean a lot of meaning has meaning in that the example of morpheme for example Dog, one morpheme. Book, one morpheme. Tea, one morpheme. So this word has one morpheme. So there are two types of morpheme, which are free morphemes and bound morphemes. Free morphemes is a morpheme that can stand alone and have ability to be a word by itself. For example, dog, mountain, yellow, is they are all free morphemes. And the next type is bound morphemes. Bound morphemes such as re, nest, teeth, s. This kind of morpheme cannot stand alone by itself as its name. It has to be bound with a free morpheme to be a what? To be a complete what? In a bound morpheme, we can separate it into two types, which are inflectional bound morpheme and derivational bound morpheme. Inflectional bound morphemes is the type of morpheme that if we add it to the word, it's the only thing that is going to change and going to affect the word is that it's going to affect the grammatical ending. So for example, we can find inflectional bound morpheme in the case of possessive adjective apostrophe s. Like for example, the chair's leg is broken. So apostrophe s here is the inflectional bound morpheme and it affects the grammatical ending to carry the possessive meaning. Or Joey runs faster than Betty. So, so the inflectional bound morpheme that we have in this sentence is er. Er is inflectional bound morpheme that we add to denote comparative grammatical meaning of this sentence. And the second type of bound morpheme is derivational bound morpheme. Derivational bound morpheme is the morpheme that we add to the free morpheme to change the meaning of the word or to change the part of speech or it can change both. So for example, we have the word unkindness. Unkindness, we have, we add derivational bound morpheme next into the word to change adjective kind into the noun kindness. And we also add the derivational bound morpheme un to change the meaning from positive to negative. So this is how derivational bound morpheme works. And the next new term that I would like to introduce to you guys is STEM. STEM is a really new term that you have never experienced in introduction to language and linguistics. So what is STEM actually? STEM is any item that before attached by the inflectional bound morphemes. 
So be careful. The difference between the different the difference between stems and base is that stem focus only on inflational biomorphism. But if you would like to look at base, base care for both both inflational biomorphism and dilutional biomorphism. So come back to stem. In stem. If you would like to analyze them, you just cut the last infectional biomorphism out, and then you got them. Which means not every word has them, because not every word that we are going to add infectional biomorphism, right? So, for example, for the word like formalizes, in the word formalizes, if you would like to analyze them, you just cut the last infectional biomorphism out. So, in this word, we have the morpheme, the free morpheme form. A L and I S E and S, which is S, which is infectional biomorphism, right? So we just cut it out, and then we are going to have stem formal lice. So, for example, another example, um, the word presentation, presentation. In this case, if I ask you to, okay, can you analyze stem for me? No, we don't have stem in this case because presentation in this word we don't have infectional biomorphism. So this word doesn't have stem. Only base. The base of presentation is yes, present because we cut shun out, which is the last biomorphism. So that's all for this chapter. See you again next week. Bye.